What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about the top 10 things you didn't know the UK invented. That's right, you didn't know. I actually think this video is kind of speaking to me in particular. Things you, as in me, didn't know the UK invented, because I certainly agree that there are probably many, many, many things that, uh, I don't know, I use on a daily basis, maybe, that the UK invented. I, I don't know where anything was invented, let's be honest. It's, it's kind of rare that I even know, you know. I don't know where paper plates are from, or uh, fridge magnets or something, you know. Who, know. who knows who made that? Maybe the UK did. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm ready to find out. And if you're ready to find out, let's find out. Top 10 things you didn't know the UK invented. For this list, we've picked out some of Blighty's best inventions and ranked the ones which we think are often overlooked. Okay. Number 10, chocolate bar. What? Well then, I've been eating a lot of toad beer at home. I've eaten four, and they've got two white ones back. What? What? This is kind of a big deal. <laughs> not a specific chocolate bar. It's not like they made the Kit Kat. It's not like the UK made the Crunch Bar or the Hershey Bar. Uh, I don't know if those are American brands. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I can't come up with a UK chocolate bar on the top of my head. Uh, wait, hold on. For the purposes of this video, UK chocolate bars. Um, we're not talking about Cadbury Crunchies <laughs> or Wispa Golds. We're not talking about those. We're talking about chocolate bars in general? <laughs> Okay. But they don't like them as much as the dark ones. Before Mars bars, Dairy Milk, Twix, Twirl, or Toffee Crisp came Fry's Chocolate Cream, predated only by bittersweet treats, including an innovative 1847 effort by Joseph Fry himself. What? Chocolate Cream was the first bar to be widely distributed, hitting. Okay, so to be clear, this isn't the invention of chocolate itself, which is pretty darn impressive. Uh, but this is still pretty darn impressive. It's a chocolate bar. And they, what, invented filling at the same time? Because this chocolate bar had a filling in it? Uh, that's kind of amazing. Shelves in 1866. Make them. Was the first bar to be widely distributed, hitting shelves in 1866. Make 1866? 1866 existed? There was a time before 1867? That long ago? I'm <laughs> being a little facetious here, but I would not have thought it was uh, that long ago, you know? 150 years ago? The moment last with Fry's chocolate cream. Dairy-free with a fondant center, the idea quickly caught on with a certain John Cadbury starting mass production soon afterwards. Oh, there's the Cadbury. R immediately after. Wow. I mean, imagine. Imagine someone invents the chocolate bar. You're a guy <laughs> 150 years ago, or girl, 150 years ago, uh, and this person just goes ahead and invents chocolate bars, and, and you're like, what did you just do? What is this? You're like eating it, and you're like, what? This is a thing? And then <laughs> it's funny because that's probably how all inventions, all inventions went exactly like that, I'm sure. Exactly that scenario. <laughs> what? This is a thing? And uh, of course, someone comes along, does it a little better, a little different. Okay. Then came Henry Nestle, Rudolf Lindt, and Milton S. Hershey. Chocolate? <laughs> Chocolate? <laughs> Chocolate! <laughs> is SpongeBob popular in uh, the UK? This is so classic, Spongebob, wow. <laughs> Number nine, postage stamp. So can you set fire to a postage stamp? No, in fact, a postage stamp is legal tender. A bus driver would have to accept. This is not disappointing. This list is not disappointing. Things you didn't know the UK invented should be things that are monumental to humanity that the UK exists, <laughs> that the UK invented. Chocolate bars, important for humanity. Stamps. Postage? Uh, okay. Except that. Here's one to write home about. The heady history of the postage stamp boasts a series of major players, with most of the significant changes happening in London. Ah, uh, yes. Huh. There it is. The Penny Black. Sir Roland Hill is widely credited with creating the self-adhesive item we take for granted today, as well as a regulated cost system, introducing the first stamps, the Penny Black and the Two Pence Blue in 1840. Wow, I mean, inventing the stamp. 
comes along with, you know, inventing the concept of, oh, I'm going to pay for this thing to represent payment for traveling this package. You know, stuff like that. It co It's not just inventing the little square, little sticker. There's more to it than that. Uh, very impressive. Both bear an image of Queen Victoria and both are worth a pretty penny today. So everybody who wants to send a letter will have to lick my face. Number eight, <laughs> Viagra. What's the matter? What? What's the matter? Really? You just took a Viagra to have sex with me. Well, I, I, I thought it would make it better. Sex. Whoever invented uh, Viagra, apparently someone, an individual in the UK, is this one of those that was uh, an accident? Invented by accident kind of thing? I forget. I for I feel like I've heard about... Uh, anyway. Um, whoever invented this must be rich. Like, rich, rich. Is something of a specialist subject in British history. First, the vibrator was conceived by an 1880s physician who sought a cure for female hysteria. And then male impotence was solved largely by accident. Oh. The effects of sildenafil, or Viagra, were discovered in 1991, when a yeah. group of Kent-based Pfizer employees were researching a proposed new treatment for angina. Wow, 1991? That recently, 30 years ago, wow. But rather than writing the heart, the product precipitated other noticeable changes. <laughs> Why did I have to pause it on this frame? Findings were quickly turned into a... Okay, there we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, imagine. That's the side effect of the drug you're working on. It was a heart drug? And then it really gets your heart pumping, and you've invented something completely different. And then you, then you have the presence of mind to be like, Well, guys, slow down. This could, this could be better than even what we were working on. Like, a pill sparing bedroom blushes worldwide. Yeah. You can't. Took Viagra. Number seven, table tennis. What? In truth, the UK is responsible for, or it had a major hand in, the development of countless sports. Badminton, that was us. Cricket, obviously. Rugby, football, snooker, and bowls, all at least partly British. Really? That's actually fascinating. That could be a list all in and of itself. In hat taking part in inventing a bunch of sports. Ping pong, I think most people would think, I think, uh, at least for the last, gosh, 20 plus years, China, at least in the Olympics, has dominated ping pong. I haven't kept up to date with it that well. But last I heard, um, sometimes I YouTube highlight. <laughs> I watch highlights of ping pong on YouTube, actually, from time to time. So I would have thought it was invented in China. But in the UK, wow. Squash was invented at Harrow, netball at Hampstead College, and modern golf is Scottish. But we've singled out table tennis. For the first time, a father and son are playing each other in the World Table Tennis Final, and neither of them are Chinese. An Olympic sport since 1988, it began in Victorian England as a popular parlour game. Using improvised nets and paddles, players played over a dining table, often serving golf balls to their opponents. Somebody huh. said, world peace was in our hands. But all I did was play ping pong. Number six, flushing toilets. Well, flushing toilets. Again, I choose the best frames to pause on, don't I? Well, there is evidence that early civilizations used water to sanitize toilets. It wasn't until Tudor England that a recognizable Ugh. flush system emerged. Oh God, I beg you, please, make <laughs> this water go down. Wow, I would have thought this. This is the type of invention that has like a patent or something. This is a very pure idea. Flushable, there was a toilet, something you go to the bathroom in, aka a bucket, and then you invent like the flushable toilet. Uh, pretty cool. I will sit at your feet and I will serve you for all of eternity. Said John Harrington led the way, installing a basic model for Elizabeth I at Richmond Palace. But it was almost 200 years before this throne became a household convenience. Wow, 200 years before modern toilets. Some guy made one for the queen? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, probably pretty rudimentary, but hey. How about a courtesy flush over there? <laughs> South Yorkshire's Thomas Crapper perfected the U-Bend in 1880. At the Great Exhibition in 1851, purpose-built WCs were all the rage. Yeah, in all seriousness, a toilet and the plumbing and the twists and the stuff with water pressure is complicated. It's an engineering feat, I submit to you, coming up with the toilet, much more than meets the eye. 
Number five, guillotine. Oh. Though best known for cutting through French history, this deadly device was actually a British idea. Beheading oh. was a popular way of executing criminals in the Middle Ages, but all that wielding of swords soon got tiresome. While the guillotine was named after a French doctor, early versions are recorded as far back as the 1200s. In wow, the 1200s, almost a thousand years ago. Imagine living in a time where cutting people's heads off is so common that it's too tiresome to get the old giant sword and do it. Too much work, too many people to go through, that you invent a machine to do it. Pretty, uh, pretty gnarly. In Northern England and Scotland, the Halifax gibbet featured a crude axe head on a wooden board, while legend says the Scottish maiden was used to behead an earl who helped install it. Huh. Number four, jet engine. Historically, what? war forces ideas. I feel the need, the need for speed. First, the military tank was devised by the Brits for World War One, supposedly oh. inspired by a H.G. Wells story. Thank Wait, there's so much stuff that could have been on this list, I swear. Uh, someone in the UK helped invent the tank? And then, rightfully so, on this list is the jet engine, which is just a uh, airplane engine on steroids. I'm sure there's more to it than that, but pretty cool. Uh, unfortunate that it was all based around innovations needed for war and combat, but regardless, pretty impressive. Then came pioneering advances in the skies. The first patent for the jet engine was filed by Sir Frank Whittle in 1930, but Whittle's revolutionary ideas weren't realized until midway through the Second World War, mm. by which time a German designer had already adapted his plans. Furthermore, Whittle's ideas were also shared with America, meaning Britain missed its head start for their commercial applications too. Huh. If you gain control, you gotta lose control, right? I can't hear you! Number three, IVF. Introduced wow. in the 70s, in vitro fertilization flipped some of our most fundamental ideas about human biology. How many yeah. times have you tried now? This is an interesting one, because this is getting into very, very modern ideas of, in of inventions, um, like cloning or DNA modification, stuff like that. This is uh, creeping into that territory of inventing something that alters human biology, which is truly amazing. Truly an amazing time to be alive in. Um, and has obviously helped out countless people. Now three, nine. The last two were in vitro. Developed for the most part by Patrick Steptoe and Robert G. Edwards, it proved that a successful pregnancy could be initiated outside of the human body. Louise yeah. Brown was the world's first so-called test tube baby, conceived in a petri dish and born in Oldham. Well, given your situation... Yeah, this just... I bet, I wonder when this first happened, if people were like, oh, that's weird, that's, uh, that's science mixing with humanity, that's no good, but it's done so much good for people, um, conceiving babies, uh, using this method that it ended up being worth it. And now we're at a point again where humanity is like, oh, maybe we can alter the DNA of our, of our unborn children so that they don't uh, contract diseases or so that they're super tall and strong and everyone's at this point pretty much like eh, I don't know about that but uh, I wonder if the day will come kind of like in vitro fertilization where we all accept it as normal and the options with the greatest chances for success would be surrogacy or insemination using a sperm donor the birth raised ongoing ethical questions but the procedure has become an increasingly available option with more than 250,000 IVF babies already born in the UK. What does wow. that mean? It means that my guys won't get off their bark loungers and you have a uterus that is prepared to kill the ones that do. <laughs> Number two, digital audio player. Digital audio player. So that's a really, really bad, really not sophisticated iPod, basically. The first digital audio player. You could plug your headphones in. Okay, I had uh, something like this, like a off-brand kind of thing. I I'm assuming this is talking about the act absolute first one, though. Otherwise known as portable media player and MP3 player, almost famously, an iPod. 
You'd be forgiven yeah. for thinking that these devices came straight out of Silicon Valley, but no. Nope. The gadgets were first thought up by Kane Kramer, a London-based serial inventor who designed the IXI in 1979. She's mm. making playlists. She likes to listen to MP3s when she hunts. Similar in size to a cigarette packet, with a small screen and four navigation buttons, the blueprints are uncanny. But Kramer's patent expired a decade later, leaving others free to act on his ideas. Wait, what? He invented it? and never made a company around it or, or mass produced it, or maybe never physically made a prototype. He just patented it and then it ran out and, and other people just made it. But he came up with the idea. Wow, that sounds rare that it happens like that. Usually when someone comes up with such a good idea, they don't just sit around for 10 years doing nothing with it. And that they did. Number one, motion pictures. Oh, wow. Yeah, this has to be number one. I mean, we are watching a motion picture right now, technically. Um, kind of different than, <laughs> than when it was invented with moving pictures. But uh, it's all led to this moment of you watching me watching a screen on YouTube in 2022. Here we are. It's all led to this moment. <laughs> we finish with Britain's mass of media breakthroughs. Thomas Wedgwood, son of the pottery pioneer, experimented with early attempts at photography, while the Scotsman, John Logie Baird, was the first to demonstrate TV. But Edward Muybridge takes top spot, thanks to his modestly named 1870s study, A Horse in Motion. Yeah. Aimed to determine how a horse gallops, it featured a series of silhouettes viewed through another of Edward's inventions, a zoopraxoscope. Yes, yes, I am pretty sure we are taught about this in American school, the brief touches we have on cinema history, talk about this horse and guy, uh, and the first motion picture kind of example. Wow. That was an early film projector, and the study was a precursor for motion pictures and the movie industry. Do you agree wow. with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo UK and subscribe. Wow. Wow, I do agree. I agree. <laughs> that was good. That was by Watch Mojo UK. Thumbs up to that. I liked that. What do people say about this? Brits have invented loads of great stuff. Yeah, they have. Uh, they really, really have. <laughs> we also invented the country of America. Okay. All right, relax. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> Maybe. Sorta. Inadvertently. <laughs> Uh, and people say there's nothing proud about being British. People don't say that. I, you can be proud and British. It's all good. Um, don't forget light bulbs, iron hold ships, steam locomotives, mechanical television, fish and chips, pastries, and all the wonder thing, other wonderful things. Wow. I mean, they did even mention that there were other things uh, the UK has invented. Pretty amazing. Um, I enjoyed this list. I mean, most of these things, <laughs> a lot of these things, I'm looking over them now. Chocolate, postage stamp, are like, these are important things. I like, <laughs> I put I put chocolate maybe even above the postage stamp, not even equal, just equal. T uh, ping pong, love it. To toilets, uh, jet engines. The vi digital audio player, uh, the the music player. Wow. Okay, these are these. Many of these changed the course of humanity as we know it. Let's put it that way. Pretty important. <laughs> Pretty cool. Good stuff. Anyway, if you thought this was cool and good stuff as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to the UK. UK culture stuff in the UK that I've never seen before. Feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.